Well, as we try to connect to our reporters, uh, we continue our conversation with Mr. David Siluka, the Manager of Corporate Communications and Marketing at the ECN. I want to know, uh, Mr. Siluka, what challenges did the ECN observe you know, during uh, the registration process uh, across the country? Uh, I think at the Commission we did not really um, face major challenges um, in terms of... Uh, uh, this process of registration. Um, of course, yes, at the commencement of the registration process, we could observe the slow moving of the queues. Actually, um, based on assessment, um, we realized that it might have emanated from, you know, number one, the staff are new, um, the, the equipment is new, and the staff had to get used to using these equipments, but also we also observed that uh, um, the printers were quite slow in terms of uh, uh, printing out the cards. Mm -hmm. But then as we closely monitored the situation and addressed these minor glitches, um, the process started w going quite effective and mm -hmm, efficient mm -hmm. in the second week of the registration. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't really, uh, we, we can't really um, mention that there were major, major challenges that we have uh, um, observed during the registration process mm -hmm. apart from um, those of the minor challenges that we observed in the few weeks uh, from the commencement. But also what we have done as a commission in terms of addressing these uh, major minor challenges was to ensure that um, we then um, redeploy or deploy um, additional kits to registration points and also to um, establish additional registration teams mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, we cover up um, the areas where we thought uh, we had left out. So I think in short, um, the process to us, it was quite efficient, effective, and as uh, some of the electorate have indicated, it was quite effective. They only spent about roughly three minutes for them to get the uh, their voters cards. Awesome. Yes. Well, of course, we touched earlier on uh, the aspect of young people, you know, participating and exercising their civic duty, and what the ECN did this time around to sort of draw them in um, and make sure that they do uh, register if they are of eligible age. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that one of the strategies that you employed was to uh, make an ambassador. Um, of uh, the former Ms. T, Namibia yes, Oriana. Yes. I want mm. to know how successful um, that was. And, and you said that, uh, you know, the figures were, were fruitful. So can you give us some statistics in terms of, you know, uh, the number of youth that came forth and registered? Um, yeah. Um, you, you see, it, it's quite challenging for us now to provide the figures, the actual figures of the youth that have uh, um, actually registered because, you see, the whole statistic that we receive both um, across the country and from abroad is processed together. So what we have is the pre preliminary statistics. Then after the preliminary statistics, we need to go into uh, the, the production of this data. And this, this data will be um, filtered by the um, fingerprint automated fingerprint identification system that we use, the IFA system, which will then be able to segregate data. Mm -hmm. See, okay, how many youths did we register? Uh, how many females and males did we register? Um, how many people with disability and where are these people um, registered? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so only then will we be able to um, clearly indicate the number in terms of the data segregation of what we have registered. So how are you so confident that the youth indeed did come out in numbers this year? Well, uh, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> by the look of the eyes, <laughs> by the look of the eyes, and uh, of course, uh, if you look at uh, the, 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 the statistics uh, from the observation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you would see that uh, uh, more young people in the queues than the elderly ones. <laughs> so we are quite optimistic. If you go to uh, yesterday, we were at NAST, um, and we then went to UNAM, 
um, and you could really see that uh, the students were coming through to register themselves. Fantastic. So if UNAM and uh, NAST have a population of more than 14,000, <laughs> <laughs> we keep enough in the trust. <laughs> <you know? laughs> well, our reporter in the Rongo region is standing by to give us an update uh, on what's been happening on the ground there. Stefan, uh, wait up, it's over to you. Yes, um, how are you doing, Nina? I'm good, thank you. And yourself, Stefan? It's quite a bit chilly here, but um, it's, it's well with me. Stefan, talk to us about the challenges that you observed during the registration process um, within the region. Um, since the beginning of this uh, registration uh, for the November um, voting, um, the only challenge that I can point out right now was the weather element since um, the wind blow down most of the tents that were erected for people to be able to have mobile um, uh, voters registration points. Um, the second one is um, not really common only in uh, Swakopmund or elsewhere in the Arongo region, but um, it's countrywide that uh, the system was a bit slow. Um, that was a complaint of the past, but now um, um, that was a complaint of the past, but now um, the system is back online and it's, it's moving. Fantastic. I was just asking Mr. Siluka about youth participation. Uh, from the voting uh, registration points where you have visited and have had a, an opportunity to see uh, you know, individuals come and register, were young people there in, in numbers? Yes, uh, yesterday when I moved around, I have uh, spotted a lot of young people um, standing up um, in their school uniform um, trying to support uh, or trying to be part of uh, this um, trying to support uh, or trying to be part of uh, this um, voters registration um, as we are speaking they are also in line um, now young people are coming up in numbers where I am there is quite a lot of young people outside standing in the queue um, getting ready to uh, to come register Stefan, did you get an opportunity to engage one or two of the young people? Do they understand the importance of their civic participation and their responsibility? Yeah, uh, just some split seconds ago, I spoke to two of um, one of the Rongos vibrant young people who said um, their ago, voices I... should be heard as young people. They want to be part of the change and they too one of the, um, one of those said, um, their voices should be heard as young people. They want to be part of the change and they too want to be um, one of those who will look back over their shoulder and say it was their vote that count that made the difference. Stefan, we call them last minute legends. They're very well known in Namibia that always do things last minute. What are the, the queues looking like this evening? Is it jam packed over there or is it just, you know, as it was every other day? Well, Nina, as I can tell you, people are flocking, making their way to the voters registration points right now. I spoke to some of them earlier in the morning. Um, uh, they were already lined up making their the way to the voters registration points right now I spoke to some of them earlier in the morning um, uh, they were already lined up around six seven o'clock they were already standing while the doors were closed I spoke to them and they are saying that they did not have opportunity some of them were in their workers uniforms as uh, as to they don't have time to uh, they are not given time by their employees to, um, or their employers uh, rather, to uh, go s uh, stand mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. queue because they will be penalized uh, for doing so. Mm -hmm. So um, that is one of the challenges that they are facing, um, especially those that are working. And those for school learners, they only get time after school and um, they have to do their homework, they have to do their house chores and yeah, that those are some of the uh, challenges. Well, Stefan, we are having some technical difficulties with hearing you and seeing you, but I think our viewers and myself and Mr. Siluka got the gist of what we were discussing this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. That was uh, NBC reporter Stefan Uera up on the ground in the Orongo region giving us an update and his views from there. Well, Mr. Siluka...
uh, you've heard it from the horses mouth there. I also want to talk about the fact that the ECN has set out to register 1.6 million eligible um, voters. Uh, I think a week ago, the figure came out that we were at about 1.3 uh, million uh, voters. I did make mention of uh, the you know <coughs> last minute legends yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that come through. Um, did you get an update on the figures anytime this week to be able to share with us? Uh, well, thank you. Um, I think uh, before we go to that, I just want to call upon um, the eligible Namibians who have not yet registered. We have 20 minutes to the close of time, <laughs> so please rush to the nearest registration point and get there within the next 20 minutes to get yourself registered for um, the upcoming elections. Uh, well, coming back to your questions, uh, of course, um, um, this week we did not yet uh, receive the official um, data mm -hmm. of the total number of registration. But as we observe um, some of the registration points, you would see that there's quite positive um, turnout in terms of uh, registration. I'm saying so because yesterday I visited the Comasta constituency in the Comas region. And Comastar constituency was one of the constituency with uh, a bit low turnout in terms of uh, um, the total registered voters in comparison to their statistics. And as at uh, the 27th of July, they stood at 63%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And according to the team leaders and the supervisors um, of the constituency, they indicated that over the past weeks, they could literally receive quite a number of people. But since the beginning of this week, mm -hmm. um, they have observed a large turnout of applicants coming through to register. So it indicates that um, the population or the eligible voters in that constituency uh, were still reluctant, mm -hmm. but not in a negative manner, mm -hmm. but they managed to pull through within the last few hours that are left in order to ensure that their voices are also heard. So we thank them <laughs> <laughs> and we encourage those, those who are still reluctant out there to use the remaining 20 minutes to get to the nearest registration points and get themselves registered. Well, Mr. Siluka, we're also going to be speaking to a political analyst in a bit uh, to get uh, a feel and a, and a gauge of uh, that vantage point from them. But we're going to take a break first and when we come back, our conversations uh, continue. Stay with us.